Okay, hi. So today we're going to be looking at a Rostec interface that's uh, got itself stuck in uh, firmware update mode. So you can see we've got the flashing red lights on the side. Uh, we normally have blue lights, but this one's only showing us the flashing red lights on the side. And even when you disconnect and we reconnect the interface, we've still only got the flashing red lights after a couple of seconds. So when the interface is uh, in this state, it can't be found by the VCDS software. So if we go to the options page and do the lead tests, we get an error message saying the interface can't be found. There we go. So we need to try and get this, uh, this problem fixed. Okay, so the first problem we've got is that our config button is now gone because the interface can't be found. So to bring that back, if we click on the net button, it then reveals the, the config button for us. So we can then launch the VCDI config utility. So what's happened is the firmware has tried to update in the interface and that hasn't completed successfully. So what we need to do is actually force the firmware update to run again. So in VCDI config, you're gonna get some error messages saying it can't read the current versions from the interface, uh, but don't worry about those. Um, we'll, they'll all go in a minute um, once we've got the firmware update to complete successfully. Okay, so if we now click on the update tab uh, in the VTO config, and then if we click check for updates, we'll then go off and try and see what the latest uh, firmware versions are for the VCDS hex V2 interfaces. And there we go, it's giving us another error message about not being able to read current version numbers, but we can ignore that. And now if you click on the um, download update button, So it's now downloading the latest versions of the, uh, the VCDS Hex V2 firmware. It takes a few minutes for it to actually go off and get all the latest versions and get those downloaded onto the interface. So if we just wait while it completes this procedure. Okay, it's working its way through slowly, so it shouldn't take too much longer now. And once it's uh, finished doing this, the, the lights on the interface should hopefully start uh, flashing different colors. Okay, so it's finished now and said we're up to date, but uh, we get another box popping up with uh, not being able to read current versions, but you can just click OK and clear that. So that should be the firmware update complete. Um, we can just do another check for updates, just so the interface uh, resets itself and makes sure it realizes what current versions it's got stored in it. But it looks like everything's completed successfully. So just to check, we can now put the bullet back in the USB box and click on tests. And there we go, we've got the interface found. But we're not plugged into a car at the moment, so we've got questionable states. So if we just go and plug into a car and uh, and then we can just make sure that we're actually able to pick up K-line information from, uh, from the interface and just make sure we can just read some fault codes. Okay, so we're plugged into a car now. So if we just do the test again, and there we go, we've actually got some um, some KL information back from one of our, our car test ECUs here. And then if we just save the setup, and now we'll just go and read some fault codes just to make sure the interface is, is fully working properly. Just go into the engine, just wait for it to connect. There we go, it's picked up all the ECU information, and now let's just have a quick look at the fault codes. Great, so that's read all the fault codes fine. So the interface seems to be uh, fully working again now. 
and uh, the firmware update is uh, has completed successfully. And now we can see the uh, lights flashing blue as they should be on the interface to show it's uh, all the firmware has updated and working correctly and it's tied itself with the computer. Okay, as the final test, if we just unplug and plug the USB cable back in, see we get a few flashes of green and then it goes straight back to flashing blue as, as it should. Thanks for watching and I hope that's helped. If you've got any problems with your VCDS interfaces, please just uh, give us a shout at Gendan Automotive Products. Thank you. Bye-bye.